Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, uh, first of all, thank you all for having me today. Um, I'm going to talk about how we um, can save data in a database. Um, before I go into that, though, I will quickly recap what we did last week. Um, last week, Ermi, uh, Ermi, Ermi, who's Ermi? Where's Ermi? Ermi um, taught you guys how to um, how to have a HTTP server and um, have a simple API which you can interact with. I'm just gonna um, go through it and ask if you still have questions there you can just ask me. So um, this is the, the, the homepage we did. I um, modified it a little. It now shows um, the complete data, not only the, uh, the name. But the interesting part is the code. So let's go there. So last week, you set up an Express server, an Express app, and that Express app um, uh, has endpoints, multiple get endpoints, which you can just um, uh, uh, open in your browser and see the, um, the results of. And um, some uh, more advanced ones, like this post and delete, which helped you to post and uh, to add users and uh, delete users. We will, I will just uh, quickly go through what we have there. So we have this person. Dash, can you see this? Yeah, we do. Okay, we have this person dash all endpoint, which shows us all the users. We can also um, use the IDs to uh, to query individual users, which does not work. Oh yeah, I need to run this. So we uh, have this endpoint where we can query a single person. We also um, uh, used uh, oh. we also used access here in the in the console to add users. I'm just gonna do that now. Let's add a user here. And this is, this is a third person. Let's add you. Query uh, so. Then when you go to person all, I'm there. So this is basically like a very quick recap of what we did last week. If you have uh, questions, please ask. Um, so currently, we are. Uh, oh yeah, I also made a little presentation, which is a really quick one. So currently. We are um, using our own database. Yeah, you have this JSON file in uh, in the root folder of the, uh, in your app in your apps folder, which you um, read and write from. You every time you want to um, find a single entry there, you just read the whole file, go through every single uh, thing there, and um, uh, check if it's uh, if you can find. Like um, I want to go over that, like the code we had from last week. Uh, from the week before, just to refresh your minds. So we had the person service. It's really slow. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, that's still really good. Okay. <laughs> okay. In um, in week, I think it was week three. Uh, we um, created the person service, which uh, was able to uh, read and write from this person database JSON. Yeah, we had this file here, which contained all the information as JSON, and you could interact uh, with it using um, uh, by by reading the whole file. So. At that, at that time, we were using the uh, native um, read file function from Node, the um, FS read file, which asynchronously gets the, uh, the complete uh, data of the file. So every single time you were reading um, any data, you were completely reading the whole file. So what we did there was then resolve this in a promise. Um, does everyone, everyone remember how this worked? The, the, the wrapping the Callback in a promise and then resolving it. Yeah, anyone? Focus. It's a complicated process. So it starts with the user. I don't remember the time you had a promise. Yes. Let's let's yeah. let's go. Yeah. It's what what is a promise? Right. We've been dealing with promises for a few weeks now. Right. So please tell me what a promise is. somehow want a promise. So the FS read file, if you remember, did not give you back a promise. If you remember, it just accepted a callback function. If you remember what it was, you just, instead of a promise, you would just give it a function and then tell it, once you're done, please execute this function. Is it for good or for bad? If it's an error, just tell me it's bad. It's an error. You can even do the same function. If you remember, the function has two terms. You can first read the error. Second one is the file content say that if FS file, read file is errored somehow, we just reject our own promise. If it somehow succeeds, we just resolve our own promise. So we just created a promise on our own. Most of the time, the libraries that we're using, in this case, Mongoose, which we will be using today, that it will return promises for you, so you don't have to wrap the read file. But in this case, FS read file does not return a promise, but we talked about this last week. The whole what JS community will change this Okay, thank you very much. And uh, okay, so we have this function here, and that gets us all our um, all our data, like all of the um, entries in the person database. So we also had an add function, which we used to um, add single persons to this. And uh, this function um, uh, first used the previously defined um, find all function. It does use await here because uh, this does return a promise, and if we um, we we don't want the promise to um, here, we want the thing behind the promise. We want the promise to be resolved. So we await it, and 
Um, after we awaited, uh, we, we had all the people in this, which is an array. We went um, for the last person, got the last person here, and then got that last person's ID. Um, because we want every single person in this database to have a single um, uh, a thing we can use to uh, find them. So uh, in this case, we use IDs for that. And as every single ID has to be unique, so it can only be in there once, we need to generate a new one which in this case we did by having the last person and adding one to its ID. So this is this line of code. Then we use the person model, which I will just quickly go through, which has name, age, and ID, which you can then um, uh, um, use the, uh, oh, the create function to, uh, to create one. We add that uh, person to the array and then we save it all. So in this case, to add a user, we had to read the complete file, it, um, do some operations, um, for example, get the last person, add the ID, and then we saved it all again. Um, there was also a, a delete function. It's this delete. There was also the delete function, which again uh, uses our find all function to get all the uh, people. Then it um, uses the uh, find index, which goes through all the entries and um, checks if the ID of the thing here, so let's just look at the Facebook database. So we have this ID, yeah? If this ID is the past one, uh, the, the past in one. So if, yeah, this uh, find index function, it returns minus one if there is nothing in here. So in this case, let's make this a little bit more clear. So in this case, if this is um, below zero, so minus one, we would just return. So it couldn't, it wouldn't be able to find the um, the the person with the index in using this function. So we, if if this passes past here, so if we get through this check and go here, we um, use the splice function, which just removes a single entry from an array, and uh, we use this person index, which we uh, used, uh, which we generated using the find index down here to delete it. Again, we saved all the we saved all the users. Instead of um, just um, removing a single one from the complete thing, we read it completely. We go through it, find the thing we want to re remove, and then in, in the end save it, um, save all of it again. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I think that's enough. Recap. Who has questions? Um, about this. Yes, but about this. Okay, great. Okay. Don't be shy. This is the interesting point that you only save it so that you can keep it in one copy. Okay, you will be doing that. <laughs> if you really have questions, please ask. Okay. So okay, so that's, that's like, um, okay, that's the current state we have right now. So. We are going to today introduce a database, a database software. So who has worked with a database before here? Hand, hands up. So what kind of databases? Postgres, so an SQL database, relational SQL yeah, database. MySQL. Some of you know a little bit about this, then this part will be boring. Um, so these are, um, ex currently you're running your app, and these are, um, you can say, like other apps or programs that run on um, your machine or on a server or wherever, and they only deal with reading and storing and finding data. They give you, also give you the ability to query. Does anyone know what query means? Should it be? 
yeah, you can ask, like, for example, um, if we want only people above the age of 30, yeah, this, um, currently we would have to um, have a new function go through all the entries and for every single entry check if um, this person is over 30. Um, but the, first of all, you have to write code for that. And second of all, what if your question is a little bit more um, complex? Like, I want people between 20 and 30, but I um, also want them all to be named Emmanuel. So you would write a function for that, but you would add functions and add functions. Databases give you um, the ability to ask these questions directly to the database, so you don't have to write code anymore for that. Also, they... Does it make sense, like, what if you said that you would say, so mm -hmm. asking questions to a database, I mean, you know, if you were to do it, as you did it, like, you would just write a function and then between ages and whatever, but then whenever you need a new query, you have to write more code and more code. And more code. This is really, really convenient. There's a thing there, it's just listening to you, But um, you, uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the databases can also scale. So currently, um, you read this. Um, you have your s a single computer and read from that. Databases can um, can be big. You can um, deal with practically infinite amounts of users. So your little computer would um, probably not be able to deal with millions of uh, people like um, request uh, doing requests to it. So databases provide an easy way to um, add power. Um, yeah. So MongoDB. Uh, let's let's go there. Um, so MongoDB is a document database. Has anyone heard the word document database before? Don't be shy. Please yeah. raise it. Please put your hand. So what is it? Nothing. <laughs> what is it? No, okay. What do you know it's about? It's a different it? question. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? <is> it? <laughs> okay. Just first raise your hands if you've heard the document database. That's 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 a, a good explanation uh, actually. Like in document databases, you instead like uh, conventional relational databases have tables and columns. Like you can imagine them like Excel, and document databases just have single entries. And these single entries um, it can be um, can be similar, but they don't have to be the same structure. So if you have, for example, a column named age, a column named name. Um, you uh, you have to have these two, and you can't add, for example, um, uh, like birthplace or something like that. Document uh, databases are different. They every single document can be its own structure. Yeah, they should be similar. It makes no sense, um, for example, having meetups and persons in the same place. But you can have. Um, they don't have to be the same. Um, Sometimes it's good at sometimes it's not good at many, but it's always there. Like it's always there. You cannot do it like you cannot just remove it for a for a role and then add it for another role. Like it's just always there. Either it's good or it's not. In this case, in this document database, you can you can organize the thing as good or not. But generally they should be similar. They should all be of the same just for the Also, um, I think I have an example here. Yeah. So, okay. so this is an example. For example, um, I have myself in there, which uh, which uh, that entry has age, but Merck only has an ad address field. So, th this works. So we are kind of different documents in a single collection, which is the name for um, um, uh, a, yeah, a collection <laughs> of documents, um, and. Uh, 
they can they can differ. So what's also great about MongoDB is um, that it saves the data as JSON, which we as uh, J JavaScript developers already know how to deal with. So you can interact with the database using JSON. Normally you have to learn a language to, uh, to talk to your databases, but in um, MongoDB you can just use um, uh, the, the JavaScript you're already used to. So uh, for example, this is an um, uh, example query which we will uh, get into details later, but this is how you find a single person. Okay, that's it with the intro, and now we will go Okay, I um, you should pull the latest. Where is it? The latest from this repo. It has a um, uh, it has a week five folder, which is basically the same um, as uh, Umer left off last week. I added some files which you can ignore for now, but um, please let me know when everyone's in this folder. Go into week five. Anyone not there yet? Okay. Okay, so everyone has MongoDB running on their machine, but as it is a separate application, yeah, we need to connect. So the first thing we're going to do today is connect our um, the uh, the app we wrote to MongoDB. So we will be using a, um, a library called Mongoose that takes lots of the heavy lifting in connecting to databases, interacting with it um, away from you, and just gives you nice inter um, nice um, uh, mechanisms to interact with uh, databases. So first of all, we're going to install Mongoose. Just npm install Mongoose. <laughs> As always, we are using an NPM package here. If you have using any package, only if you have the NPM, you will have the latest and best search for just find Mongo and search engine MongoDB and you find it. And it's like a de facto standard of interacting with MongoDB and how it works on Mac. So all will be just like NPM UI removed from Mongoose. And what will happen? What happens after the NPM I Mongoose command line? Can anyone do it with any command line? What I'm going to see uh, uh, different here in, in our folder structure, which files will change when we npm install Mongo Mongoose? Mod modules. What will be in the mod modules? Mongoose and all of its dependencies. And in the other, what, what was the other file? Package JSON. What, yes. What's going to be changed in the package JSON? Dependencies. We use body parser and express and pod for the express service that we did last week, and chalk for coloring the terminal, if you remember. Now we have another dependency, Mongoose. Yeah, thank you. So, how do we connect to MongoDB? So, let's make a new file in, in week five and call it Mongo Connection. So, I want to interact with Mongoose now. Who can tell me how I do that? What do I need to type now? Yes. So, okay, we now have Mongoose. So, who can guess what the name of the function is to connect? Connect. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so. So this asks um, us for URI, uh, which is just the location of the MongoDB. Yes. Why do we need to connect to the MongoDB? What is connecting to the database mean? Can anyone raise their hand and tell me what is connecting to the 
Yeah, it's um, it's it's um, it's the the program you started with your terminal and it's uh, running completely separately from your um, from your uh, node app here. And in order to have um, to ask your questions, we just need to have a have a connection to it, which is which will be opened and then it will stay open until we um, either kill the app or we tell it to disconnect. So this is what we need now. So previously we had. Um, uh, we used uh, Umir to uh, create an HTTP circuit. So I'm just gonna make some examples here. So uh, he had an HTTP server on localhost. Localhost is, um, who can remember what localhost means? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Your computer. Yes, yes. It's the address of your computer, right? It's defining all of your Exactly. So um, previously, um, we this is a, a format you you already know. So we um, we use the protocol HTTP to connect to localhost on this port, and we're going to change this to connect to our MongoDB. So the protocol is MongoDB. Yes, probably. Okay. Then um, we're going to connect to localhost. We will not be needing the port anymore. Um, Mongoose knows the port of database so we don't need to uh, tell it that and um, then we need to the last thing we will add there is a database name and there you can just go test and it will automatically create a database name test in your uh, in your local MongoDB database um, so yeah you can call this whatever you want uh, no no special characters please <laughs> So um, an example would be if you have two apps and both of them need a MongoDB, you don't need to spin up two MongoDBs. You just need to make this name different in both. So they both use the same um, MongoDB but have different databases in there. So I will add um, a promise here and just say console.log connected. So we can see this returns a promise, I hope. Does it? Yes, it returns a promise. So um, this returns a promise, and I, I just want to see if it's if it's connected. So let's run this. No, it's not. That's not good. So did I forget to run MongoDB? <laughs> let's see. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot the next step. Okay, so can anyone tell me why this didn't work? So I made this file. I made this file here, the Mongo connection file. Yeah, put it in my folder. What happened? Can you run the code? Nothing. It 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 ran the app. It said server listening, but it didn't say connect. This never happened. So. Yes. That's the problem. I created this file, but I didn't. Um, this um, Nordman always go, um, does open the index.js. So if you omit the index.js, it's going to open that. And in this index.js, this file has no idea that this file even exists. So how do I get it in there? Anyone? What do I have to do? How do you make use of MongoDB? Yes. I have to require it. Yeah. So let's do that. Way of requiring things, but mm -hmm. in the backend, currently we don't use default, but we use the browser to require it. It's 
and you listen to that, you get a sense of maybe the individual and where you can get to, and maybe you can still be with certain functions and everything in your head, but for now let's use the quiet time. Yeah. So I, c um, I can just require it because this file does not have an, a module.export, so I don't need to access anything from it. I just need it to be inside my app so it will be run. So let's require our file. Longer connection. Yeah. And let's try this again. Even though it doesn't export anything, it still means that it will run it and that both the file and the execute it, even though it doesn't return anything. And what we need is just for it to connect and then send something and see if it will give anything back. So just to give you a little sense of how it works. Uh, yep, give me a second. No, not you. I uh, know that's uh, me trying to find out what's <coughs> wrong. Uh, hello, Frank. Okay, so something's wrong. I don't know what. So let's also catch the error. Currently, I'm just ignoring the error. It's gonna uh, result in an unhandled promise projection, which you can uh, find out why, uh, you, which you can prevent by actually catching the error. This promise throws an error, and we are not um, carrying it for it. So this time, I'm gonna catch the error. Go console dot. Yeah, I, I did the wrong way to think of this. So you just throw an error and you just catch it and you remove an error from the end of the request. Okay. All right. I think it's fine. I have lots of MongoDBs. You have lots of MongoDBs. Yeah. Let's, let me let me uh, keep running. Probably this. won't be seeing the error. No, you will. You wrong. will probably be seeing a uh, Mongo connected. So, so I, I had two MongoDBs running, which this can't deal with. So now we are connected to MongoDB, but we see this ugly warning here, and um, that is because you need to also pass an options object. So as a second parameter to connect, you pass an options um, parameter. We just, just to, to, to not have to know why. Yeah, technically. it's it's, it's just to, to make this warning go. It's just a warning. It's yeah. Just to I have no idea why this is a thing. It's just problems, a problem, a very likely for, um, they, they change something and they uh, want to be backwards compatible. So they don't want to break, uh, break old people, uh, or people, old code of people. Yeah. <laughs> this is just like the example I gave with the FSV file, right? They, yes. They actually changed something here and they now put a warning. It's a deprecation word. It's a fancy word, but it's really used in the computer science world means that something will not be supported in the future. Yeah. So if you are using it, this is the time to change it. It's, yeah. just, it's just giving us a warning. It still works, but it's just bugs you all the time. Like, please change whatever you are doing. It will be changed in the next version or something. Okay, so we got rid of the warning. We have server listening and connected, which is great. So now we have connection, a stable connection to our MongoDB database. sure that everyone sees that connected console logger. It just yeah. means that your MongoDB is up and running and your application is able to connect to it, which is a really, really good way to use it. Please raise your hands and tell us if you cannot see the connected there. We will help you. Yeah. Don't. Um, okay, if you don't have it, make sure you're in the week five folder.
Yes, you are. Actually. How are we doing? Do we still have problems with seeing the connected? Does anyone have any problems with connecting to MongoDB? If not, we're just going to continue. That's good. So everyone's connected to MongoDB now. Yes. Yeah. 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 We will do is we will describe um, how our documents are, should look. Um, currently, we are using this person JS. Um, we're gonna <laughs> go into person JS, and we will replace this code, which is the person model, with a mongoose code. So first of all, let's get mongoose in. So, what we want is a schema, and a schema is just a, f um, a, just a description of how something will look. So, we will create the person schema, and to do that, we will use mongoose. Sorry, my name is Kaiser, I'm just a new player. Schema may sound like a fancy word, but it's just like, it just means a structure. Yeah, that's it. It just means a structure of the document. We also need to make a new mongoose schema. And this takes a single argument and it is an object. And this object just describes what we will have in there. So currently we have name and age. So let's add name. So um, in databases 
you have to define types. So you can't just save data uh, as in JSON, you can just save it. And in the database, you need to tell it what, um, uh, for every single, um, uh, these are called fields, uh, for every single field, you uh, tell it what type it is. So a name, what type um, could a name be? What type can you give it? What yeah. type? Can, can you give an example of a type? This is something like any type. Yeah. String. String. String is a type. What else is there? Uh, integer. Integer. Integer is great, yeah. Perfect. What else? Boolean also. Boolean yeah. It's not, if you don't know what it is, it's just not that very important. But we'll get there. Just going over it, the types. Like, it's just, as you can see, I like get from the name, it's just, it just defines the type of the type. Is it a number? Yeah. Is it a string? Exactly. Is it, is it something? What is it? Like, it's a correct answer to what is it. Yeah, exactly. So, what is this? What do you think? What is a name? Yeah. String. Perfect. String. String and we also have the age. So, what is an age? Integer. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Per okay. but JavaScript, do, do, does JavaScript have integers? Number, number, number. 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 Does JavaScript we have numbers covering both for integers and for numbers? And so it's only numbers, it's not integers. Yeah, exactly. So now we have the schema, and this just describes how we want it to look. This does not give us a model yet. We have to do some uh, one extra step to have a model which we can then interact with. So let's have a model. So mongoose dot model, and it also our uh, again takes uh, two parameters. The first one is the name, and the second one is the schema. So we want it. Oops, hold on. We want it to be a person. So just a string person. Not me. Can you do something here, or is it a user? Um, I will just disconnect. Click on someone else and then go back to the beginning. Okay. Oops. Not here. Let's see it here. Maybe if I disconnect and reconnect. I will just. This is good. This yes. is my screen. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Turn it off and on again. Great. Um, okay. So where were we? Okay. We were making a model. Still not there. It's here. It's not there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there is that. Oh. <laughs> Let's not spend more time and we'll just go to the next slide. Okay. For now, sorry for it. <laughs> okay. You so can just join the meeting like we do it on Slack. Is it on Slack? Do you post it on Slack? Um, yeah, I posted it on Slack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we we are creating a model which um, is um, a thing we can then interact with. The first parameter was the name, the person, and the second parameter is the schema. The schema is just the, um, we have to find it here, put it into this variable, and then we're gonna pass it. So we now have a model but we want to use it from um, everywhere else in our application. So we need to make it available to the rest of, um, uh, make it available. How do I make it available, like pass it out? For example, the same follow, like create the schema and then this one is gonna create a model. Don't get lost in the details. Yeah. We're just doing this to have some form, something to interact with. We're going to ask it the questions that we want to ask. We want to query stuff if you remember. Just this is the standard setup to create something for us to ask questions. That's called a model, just like we have our own model in our own code. This is the model for Mongoose. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yes, so we will export this so we can use it somewhere else. So let's add the model mod module.exports here. And also we will not need this anymore. So we made something better. Okay, so we changed the person.js, right? Yes. We had the person model before that we wrote on our own. And Christian wants to join. <laughs> it's just standard. And we removed everything that we wrote and we just we were left with this. We just defined this schema just like we defined it on model in our class. So we had a class before. And now we export it from all those models. And we can have some magic. Okay, so um, we have this model, but we still need to interact with this. And um, you already have services, so let's get into the person service. This currently uses our um, JSON database, and we will uh, one by one replace these with Mongoose function. So take one good look at all of this, and let's get rid of it. So first, we're going to do the find all function. Currently, it um, does all of this uh, confusing stuff. Let's make that go away. So, it's gone. it's gone. So, first of all, we need mongoose again. Mongoose. Okay. <coughs> first of all, no, we don't need mongoose. Go away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't need mongoose. No, we, we exported the person model in our person JS, and this is already imported up here, so we need the person model. So, we will use... It's not that we don't need mongoose, but the thing that we need already knows what mongoose yes. is, so let's do yeah. it. This, this model already has mongoose, so I don't need to actually add it again. So we're just going to use the model. So we will uh, write our first query now. So we want to find everything. Right? This find query, um, find operation does take parameters, but if you don't give it any, it's just gonna find everything. So currently, um, how did you know that the, the method name was find? You could have just guessed it, but we want to evaluate how to know what the methods are that is in a library. If you remember, like when we were using chalk for the first time, what did we do? We went on to npmjs.org and there was documentation of it, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the people who wrote the library just were kind enough to provide documentation for it. In this case, Mongoose is a tool set, a tool list library. Mm -hmm. And you can use it and make shapes and so on. But everyone who uses Mongoose is Mongoose. Not everyone, but certainly few people who doesn't know what Mongoose are. The rest is using Mongoose. So right. But they have really good docs. So if we go to mongoosejs.com and click on guides, there's uh, some really good guides here. For example, um, we, we are writing queries, so just click on queries. This is awful. This is not a word I wanted to show. <laughs> like, like, there's that cross. Yeah. yeah. Here are the methods that we can use. Like, we're not going to get into detail, yeah. but if there's a library that you want to use and you're using it, of course you can do this documentation so yeah. that you find out what it is capable of. In this case, we know already know what find is, so we just type the find because it's just very, very simple, meant to remember, and just does what it does, it just finds stuff. But if you want to know more, just read the documentation. Okay, so we now, um, our service and, um, now already uses the database. That's um, to, to find all the entries, that's everything we have to do. And as we are changing our service, we can still use our HTTP server because our HTTP server in the persons.all just uses the find all function from the person service and we didn't change that. So this find all uh, endpoint is already there. Yeah, we, um, it is still there. We didn't touch it. So this person dash all endpoint should still work. Let's try. single function with a single index dot 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 which we get from the first two pieces of code. But now we are we have our own classes, our models, our services. There is a reason that we have this many files. In this case we just didn't have to change anything else. We just change something inside the service and everything else will still work. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So so 
Let's see. That's all. So we it it does work, but there's nothing in the database yet because um, currently uh, before you were using the JSON database, but we didn't put the data into our MongoDB, so there's nothing in there. So let's go and add fun something. So um, let's do the add function next. So first of all, let's get rid of all of this, and then. What do you think? Hmm? No? You want to add something to the database. Yeah. Uh, Insert. It would be so easy yeah. to add, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's create. Yeah. I heard create. It's create. Technically, if you remember the first two create things, which we had to do, in this case, we are creating something. Yeah. Technically, we are adding, but actually, we are adding, but technically, we are creating something. Yes. So uh, we um, this and this again takes a, a, a document. Uh, this just says any. So let's pass in our person, right? And now we uh, connected our our add function, which is also still used by our HTTP server to our database. That's it. Just one line, and we um, can now create users. Let's do that. Let's go. See what it is. So the this so the the endpoint we use to create users is a post endpoint. So I need to do a post request, and it uh, just takes um, the whole body. So everything I'm going to send it is just going to get uh, passed to the add function. So let's post to person yeah, dash person. And I already did this. Perfect. So. Um, I'm posting to the uh, person endpoint and I'm passing myself in. So I do know that it has a name and an age uh, field which I defined in the schema before. And I will do this. This looks not red, which is good. And let, then let's see, person, uh, there, there I am. So um, what you will probably notice is the ID looks pretty different. Previously, we were uh, defining the idea just as incrementing numbers, so one, two, three, four, and five, and, uh, and so on and so on. But uh, MongoDB uses its own format here. It's, um, I won't go into details, it's a little bit longer, but it's, it will always be unique and it will always point at only this uh, element. So we now are able to add users to our database and also read all of them. So. Yeah, yeah, let's let's not go there. <laughs> uh, okay, so now can you please go back to the first query? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's reiterate what we did. Mm -hmm. So uh, first we did the um, the find function, which uh, which finds all, every single entry in the database in, in the person uh, every single person, and then we did the uh, create function, which adds a person. So this function gets passed in the um, gets passed in an object, which we uh, let's make this here. No, that's not right. Um, so from top down, we in our browser do a request to our HTTP server, which is this one. This um, yeah, this one, we react to post on the um, dash person endpoint. This then. Uh, uses the request of body. Do you remember what this is? Um, can Why did you reject that body? Though? What is that body? Yeah. Can you just tell me what that body is? Yeah. Yes. This request is based on the body of the person. Request. A request. Oh, yeah. 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 The requests are basically when I like, create, for example, the address that where you are trying to post somebody. Server that becomes unpacked. And 
body is what it actually has the other actual body in it. Okay? Whatever you put it, whatever, whatever you use it, you're going to get this body. Okay? Any questions? Yes. So um, everyone um, could follow until now. Whatever you tell it will do just the same thing to the body weight. Mm -hmm. But here in this case, my rules would create a spin on the effect if you remember the word spin. We said that name has to be a string, mm -hmm. right? And age has to be a number. What if we give something else? Let's try. <laughs> Let's just try. What happens? We won't give you all the data yet. Just so it provides I'm just things that we normally have to passing my name to. and age here and let's add something. So Not that enjoyable, but let's let's not get into details. So um, I now path this. This is the whole body, and uh, let's see what we have. We have merge, but there is no birthplace field because we did not define that in our schema. Our, um, Mongoose knows this. We didn't tell it that this uh, that this um, model has a, a birthplace field, so it does just ignore it. Okay. Yes, sure. This is the schema. Then let's let's add birthplace. So birthplace string. It's I, I'm just saying string here. So let's add a birthplace. This is also a beautiful thing about MongoDB. You can do this. Normally it's um, um, it's a task changing the structure of your um, of your collections. But in MongoDB you can just say, okay, from now on I have a birthplace. That's it. Right. So. From now on, we are just looking at all the entries with that birthplace. No, you have to add it to everything. Here in MongoDB, if you take a look at the previous definition, I'm going to do it here. Yeah. Um, um, so can these are. Hmm? Can you remove this? Yes, we can. Uh, this is the next thing we will do after this. So um, I added the birthplace field uh, to my um, schema here. And now I'm going to add someone with a birthplace. Let's reload this again. Now. This entry has a birthplace. The other one don't. So this this is really a nice thing about MongoDB that you're able to do this. You need now uh, if you interact with your data now, you need to check if it has a birthplace before you can do birthplace stuff. But still, it is it is able to still run, which is awesome. Okay, so let's delete something next. Um, so before you go delete, I don't think it's really the time. Okay, yeah, sure, it is. Okay, so quick recap. Um, we now have a find all function, which finds all the persons, uh, people in our database, and we have a create function. Let's move on to the delete function. So this function uh, is supposed to delete a single user by its ID, so by its person ID. So let's write that function. So we're gonna, again, use the person model and um, use, what's it, it's, it's remove, okay. remove, it, it's remove. Okay, we can get this from the repo notes. Okay, okay. So I happen to know that it's remove. Okay, so re the remove function takes the conditions it's gonna remove one. If you pass in an empty object, it's gonna remove everything in your database, and that's very much not what we want. We want it to remove a person by its ID. So as you can see here, um, the MongoDB database um, assigns a random ID to everything, and it's this uh, underscore ID. So we want to be able to identify um, and, uh, documents in our database by this ID. So this is the condition, and we want the ID to be the person's ID. So we are now able, if we call this function with a, person, with a valid person ID, it will call the remove function 
And with this condition, so the underscore ID is the person's ID, it will remove a single person. So let's see. We also have an endpoint for that from last week, which is again nice that we have a service which just um, provides this to us. So uh, it's, it's app delete person and then we pass in the parameter ID. So let's do it. Is it ID? Yeah, it's ID. So let's go to the layout. So we're going to use the delete function here. And we are going to have to use this. So the endpoint is dash person, then the ID. But we want to delete one of these. So let's just copy, for example, this ID. Put it in here. So we have. Um, dash person and as a parameter we have the ID and let's do that and let's reload this one. So currently we have who did I delete? This one. So we have him here. Let's reload this page and he's gone. So, um, yeah, that's how you delete people. Let's go back here. Uh, you know, not people. People would be the little bit easy. Uh, so this is how you delete individual entries uh, from your database. Um, this is not only that um, currently we are target targeting single documents by their ID. So I'm uh, saying I want to delete the, the object with this exact ID. But you could also have um, more uh, complicated stuff, for example, delete everyone be below the age of five or something like that. But uh, that's, um, uh, yeah. Okay. So. Who can delete? Just, <laughs> can I just have something? Yeah. Just remember from the start, at the start of the lesson, you said that you can ask questions to the database. Actually, we are now in, in the first time we are doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This it's is the first time that we are asking a question to the DB. Yeah. But previously, we were adding stuff, giving everything. We're not asking for it. Okay, this is a question. Give me everything. But it's just a statement, not a question. Yeah. Here, this is technically a question. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I kind of glossed over that. Um, okay, so now we have a delete endpoint. And the next one, let's move on. Uh, the next one is the find endpoint. And here we're going to do something very similar to the remove one. We will find. I'm gonna ask the question, give me the person with that ID. Exactly. So let's do that. Person model dot find. Um, again, condition and underscore ID is the, what do we have? The person ID here. So okay. So we will find all people that have this ID. So let's see how the endpoint looks. This is the find function. It is used ba, 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 here. Again, we have a get endpoint, which is nice. So we can just use it in the browser, <coughs> which uh, takes, um, it takes again an ID. So let's see that. So we have person uh, here, and I only want this person. So I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna copy the, uh, the ID, paste it in here. Oh. One merge, perfect. But there's one thing wrong with this. We are asking for one person. Who can tell me what's wrong with this? It's an array, it's an exactly. Array. We are returning an array yeah, with a single entry, which um, isn't technically bad, but you still have to then um, get the first entry of the array, and we could just return one single object. And that we do by not finding something, we are gonna find one thing. So, so Find one is the, the next function we're working on. So, so it's the method provided by the yes. Product. All of these methods are provided by um, when we go back to the model uh, person JS, we call this mongoose.model function on our schema. And uh, mongoose just gives us all these functions. These are just the tip of the iceberg. There's like, uh, I don't know, 50 to 100 different ones. And all of them do crazy stuff. Um, but also very simple stuff like this, find one. So now, if we 
call this again. Let's see. We have one node. This is not an array anymore. We can find a single entry. Um, it's important to note that this finds the first entry that uh, does um, uh, um, satisfy these conditions. So if there, um, if for example, we would uh, search by age or something, it would uh, just give us the first person with that age, if there's multiple That's entries. A little bit confusing. slash end point, maybe we want to search with names, I think. Yeah. If we have an OB endpoint point, our, our application would depend on name, then we wouldn't be sure that if everyone has this, that you know, only a single person has the same name, it depends on multi-person. So in this case, it's not obvious we wouldn't want to find one when we're searching for a name. Yeah, so yeah. exactly. Thank you. So now we replaced all the important functions all the important functions we had before, the find all, which just finds everything, the add function, which uh, uses the create to add a person, the remove, which um, by ID uh, add, uh, removes a person, and the find one, which gives us, again, by ID a single person. So, just to interject one more time, just, as a, just to reiterate, we did this work to search ID, person ID, and then we talked about getting people by their name. How would you like an endpoint that gets Let's just assume this gives nothing. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we try to make that. And also. then we have to change this to person yeah. name because that's actually not the best use of that person name in our case. Yes. yes. Very, uh, we can destructure here. So. Let's see what that does. Yeah, no? Okay. Yeah, we, we I, I think it's that. cool. Let's You're let's go real really quick. Yeah. So let's say this um, the, the parameter here would be name. So we could write name colon name. And in this case, if this and this have the same name, this the name is name is name. Then when they have the same name, you can omit one of the names. <laughs> this is one of the yeah. new language features. Uh, just a screen. If, so if left hand side and right hand side have the same thing, then you just remove the left hand side. Yeah, but let's not do that. Let's go to this name. Let's go. Okay, so I like. One, one more thing. Mm -hmm. Something still wrong. But we talked about people having multiple, multiple different person surnames. So in this case, it wouldn't be nice to just find one, but instead, yes. no. Find. Yes, yes. Find. Find, find. Find all is find in English. Let's find just let's find all. This. Find by. Let's oh, you also needed a new entry. That's good. Yeah, but why not? Let's. Uh, and let's go full circle. Let's and fix this. And an end point. Yeah, and okay. It's named by, by itself, it doesn't mean anything. It's okay, this is, it, so. as you can see, it's grayed out, so it's never not used anymore. We, we should, we, if you add a function, you always need to also uh, export it. So I'm adding it down here, so we can use it from somewhere else. So we now have this find by name function. And then let's make an endpoint for that. So, what kind of endpoint do we need? Is it get plus create new? Get. Yes, a get point. So what are we going to call this? So obviously it starts with person, mm -hmm. right? We need to call it person and okay. slash ID would, would be the What will, why will this not work? Because if we use other functions. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, wait. So I'm going to just be lazy. So, um, 
We now have a problem. Also, um, we are using the find by name function now, not the find function. This looks really, really good, but mm -hmm. it should work, but it doesn't. Can you see why? Please raise your hand one time if, if you can see why this works. One second. No, this class of parameter code, mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's safe. Can everyone see? This is the thing that Remember you that this was, this was a variable. This, this mm -hmm. can change. Whatever we give it, it will have its name and we will access it here. So, so basically, this example, true. we could say blah. Yeah, and then it would be blah. Anything on the right, actually. Yeah. And how is it any different than this? How would we know that it's a name but not an ID? Do we have any idea whether it's a name or an ID? When we say, it, this name, we just give it. It's just name. It's a variable. We have no idea, right? So those two are basically the same thing, exactly the same thing on, on this on this graph. They are good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Express cannot differentiate yeah. whether it's a name or it's an ID, so we have to tell it that it's it's a name. How would we do that? That that a name and an ID would be a expressibility. How do we differentiate these two entries? Let's just add something. Yes? Exactly. Let's say that it's first and slash name and then we give it. And so if we don't give the name, default it's ID. So, so now um, Express knows every time there's person dash name, yeah, when there's the actual string name. Um, it's not a variable, it's just yeah. actual string name. Yeah, so no colon before. It, um, it, it, it can say, this is not an ID. This is, uh, we want to go into this function and not into this function. So when it is a slash, it means that it's not uh, Yeah, it, it, if we don't have this um, column, you know, this one. column, then it's not a variable. It's just literal. Just like the person slash all. All is a literal there. It's just mm. all by itself. It's not a variable. Yeah, we could also call this by name or. No, there's no that. What about slash? Like Hello. Slash hmm? ID. Or here, yeah. you could have slash ID. That would also be a possibility, yeah. We, um, and we access it with that param stuff. Mm -hmm. Great close stuff. Okay, let's not start. Okay, okay. We're so. We're dealing with, with some big data issue over the things that yeah. we do. Let's try this. Anyway, uh, we have it now, so let's use it. So person dash name dash merge. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So now yeah. all the mergs will come. So if we would have multiple mergs, they would come up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let, me, let me add a merge. There can never be enough mergs. That's if you have this error, Axios is only on the local host, uh, on the root. So if you go into like something here, you don't have Axios anymore. Okay. So keep this right. Person. Person name. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I, I, I did something. <coughs> okay, so now we have an endpoint uh, to uh, find out. Okay, um, that's basically the uh, most important operations you need to have, like find stuff, insert stuff, delete stuff, and um, find all stuff. And um, uh, I also already added files to for the next thing. For the next thing, we're going to add, um, we, we will go into so currently we just have the person schema, but there's another file in there um, which already contains the meetup schema. Yes. And the big file thing that you're going to see, only you see that when there's a meetup in it, right? Yeah. Is it's it the copy paste or just the real thing? Yeah, to make this a little quicker, I already added these, but they're basically the exact same thing as person, just um, with a, a little bit different um, fields, uh, a different name. Uh, there's also a, a meetup service which also already contains contains all the function you will need. It's just the same as the person it's service. Basic instead, it's just meetup. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just wanted to um big, uh, speed this up a little, a little. So in um one thing you need to do is in the index.js there's some um commented out code. 
which you will just uncomment and save. But that will not work because at the top you also need to uncomment this. Yes. Would it be like maybe it pushes some code for you and read it and you try it on your GitHub profile screen? There, it, you, you already see the person service that you typed during the scrub. It's already a, a defined version there. Mm -hmm. And there's also another service, a meetup server. And there's the meetup module I'm talking that's already there. You can just copy and paste. Or just no, no, no. Use, you don't use that direction. Yeah, just use Point it. That exactly. Okay, um, does every, did everyone uncomment the meetup service here up here and the um, the endpoints down here? No, no. Okay. It's in index.js, right? In, uh, exactly, it's in index.js. Index there we are new endpoints that are already commented out. You can uncomment them, and then on top of it, there is another client in the web browser. Yeah. Okay. So now we um, uh, we have uh, the meetup model, which uh, just have, has a name and a location for now, and um, uh, I also, uh, 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 like I said, I already added uh, endpoints to the um, HTTP server, so we can actually <coughs> can actually add stuff there. Yeah, these are not new endpoints. These are, that's it. these are just the same endpoints, like the add, like find, add, or whatever. Yeah. But this time it just works on the meetup instead yeah. of person. They just bring it to the same. You see, because the only thing that changes is the name of the module. Yeah. Everything else is the same. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's first add a meetup. So let's see if this works. So, access, host, meetup, so, okay. And there's a meetup dash all endpoint, where now the endpoint, uh, the, uh, the, uh, our new meetup will be in. So, I skipped over all of this, so I can, um, I can teach you how to do relations. What we want now, is um, the meetup to have attendees. attendees. So people that are attending a meetup. And we could just um, say we have every meetup has its own list of people. But what happens if you, um, uh, no, we could say every meetup has a, a list of people. But what if um, a person uh, person's age changes. Yeah, you have a, a person's collection with people in, uh, with people inside. There, there's merge, and you have your um, meetups where there's also a person, which and these people, um, these two persons are totally unrelated from each other. So we have, we save them inside the meetup, and we save them inside the, um, the inside the person. They look like different persons. Yes. But there's nothing that makes sure that they're actually the same person. And that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna teach you how to do relations. Um, here, you can also have an array. So you can say this is a list. This could be, for example, a list of strings. There's a comma missing. Um, this could be a list of strings. Yeah. But we want something a little bit more complex. Um, you can also give it an object. Yeah. And, and this object, you can be more detailed. Currently, we're just saying we want a string here. But uh, Mongoose enables us to do a little bit more complicated stuff. So when you give it an object, um, you say type, and you define the type of this entry. Um, if, we would, if we would be doing this for name, we would just say type string. Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly the same. This is exactly the same as this. Yeah. It's just a little bit more. Um, you can uh, have multiple things. So for example, we currently only have the type, but we could we could say, require, for example, require true, which makes this, um, which only makes it now that it saves when it's, um, uh, which makes this field required. So you cannot save anything anymore without setting a name. But this is. So you could have, you could have person without a name. 
You should look into, um, if, if, if this is cool to you, you should look into validation, mongoose validation, but I will skip over this. I just wanted to say that you can have more stuff in this uh, schema. So currently we want, um, we want to pass in, um, we want this to be a list of people. So person, person, person thank you. Um, so I cannot remember this, so I will copy it from my thingy here. So, okay, so it's mongoose.schema.types.object ID. Yes, exactly. The type. Yeah, it's um, here is just saying we want um, the type of the field is going to be an ID. And this ID can point at any other document in our database. And we want it to point at a person. We do by doing rel do we? ref ref person. So now this thing, this attendees, is an array of persons, like real. So we just basically have a list of persons now. So these people, these persons here, can be used in the meetup as attendees. So now we need to make an endpoint to actually add people to a meetup. And let's do that. Mm -hmm. and age number, you could have defined the person schema once more here. Mm -hmm. And it would still save the persons properly. You could still update the persons. But then, as you gave the example, you wouldn't have any mechanism to link the person schema. It would still work. It would still save something that looks like a person inside that array in the attendees. It would look perfectly fine. But you wouldn't be able to link them. This now means that once that further, is actually saying that whatever we put here actually would refer us to something else. Mm -hmm. That that goes to an actual person. This is the point. I just wanted to emphasize that we could have done this another way. It would be okay. Okay. Thank you. And um, okay. So we now need an endpoint to actually add attendees. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to go with a post endpoint because I want it to change something to um, have an action to add something, which is always a good um, way to use the post endpoint. Let's get rid of this. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have a post endpoint meetup, and it's gonna be called add, add attendees, and it's gonna call a function which we not we, we don't have yet, which we will. Hmm? Yeah, add it. Mm -hmm. Mean. Uh, Uh, no, let's go with attendee. All right. Uh, we want to we want to add a single one, not okay, multiple ones. Yeah. Really okay. Thank you. Uh, I didn't see that. So, so far, yeah. So yeah. We talk about that all the time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Understand that there, there should be a model with the same specific name. Probably, I'm just guessing, but probably if you give it the actual schema or the actual person model, it will still understand it. But this is just a guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know actually. Um, okay, so we're making an add attendees. Okay, so add attendees. Um, 
let's uh, okay, let's um, give it two parameters. So we have the body, which we can um, add anything to we want. So we want uh, the first parameter to be the meet up ID, and the second one, the first dot body dot person ID. So we for this to work, we need to have a meetup. We know, need to know the ID of the meetup, and we need to have a person, which we also need to have the the ID of. So this will not work because there is no add attendee function. Like I just use it here, but it's not um, existent yet. So let's go into the into the meetup service. And it should be the meetup service, not yes. the person. Yes, yes. This is uh, we are we are adding stuff to the meetup, so we are in the realm of the meetup. So let's add it to the pub. So it's going to be an async function again because all database operations are asynchronous. So these always return a promise. Uh, function uh, add attendee. So we, uh, we up, up there decided that the first parameter is going to be the meetup ID, ID. And the second parameter is going to be the person ID. So now we need, um, we need two things. We need the meetup, we need the person, and then we need, we need three things. And then we need to uh, add the person to the meetup. So let's do that. Um, so const, first the meetup, we want the meetup. How do we get the meetup? So how, how would we get the meetup? Like, um, anyone knows? How do we get a single meetup? By its ID. Hmm? Yes, exactly. Find one. Find one and define a model for all of the other functions that are defined in the meetup. Mm -hmm. So all of the models then gets into the meetup model. Exactly. So we're gonna find it by yes, by its ID. And we're just gonna pass use this up here, so pass it here. Also, I did a mistake. What is it? What did I wrong? This returns a promise, so I need to await it. Otherwise, Meetup will be the promise, which I don't really want. I want the thing behind the meetup. So let's await this. Okay, so now we have the meetup, but we also want the person. And for that, we need the person model inside the uh, meetup service. So let's add it. Const person model. So where is it? Now in this in this service we have access to the complete model, uh, person model. So let's use it. So we want a person. This is um, going to be the same as above, nearly the same. So await person model. Find one. Yes. Yes. And again by its ID. And the person. So now we have the meetup and the persons. Uh, people, persons. Um, okay, what we want to do is we want to add this person to this meetup, and let's see. So we have an attendee, which is which is an array. So how do you add things to an array? Which let's do that. So we have meetup. We know meetup has attendees. And we just want to push the person inside there. Um, one thing to mention is. We are, we are um, doing all of this um, inside here to let Mongo know that we're finished with something. So we added the uh, person to the attendees, but MongoDB needs to know that, um, uh, Mongoose needs to know that you're done and that it now can save the changes. <coughs> it's different than working function and create function yeah. doesn't just mean that you want to create all the changes to it. Yeah. It just saves it, basically. It yeah. just, you just tell it to save. Yeah. You just don't have to tell it to save, it will just do it automatically. Yeah. Here you see that you can change multiple things. Like you can add more things, you can change things. Yeah. It's still already modeled in C. And once you're done, it will be just. Yeah, I could, for example, also uh, um, change the meetup.name to something uh, to something else. Yeah. And um, after how, how is this supposed to know when to save? Yeah. I could be doing multiple changes. I could be finished. I could not be finished. So we need <coughs> we need to explicitly tell it, tell it to save. Yeah, 
you um, when you're finished, you say. This is also a promise, I, got, I think. So let's await this. And after saving, we just want to return the meter. So now, uh, one thing missing again is um, we defined this function, but we need to export it. Like if you see something that's grayed out like this, this, um, it means it's it's a good um, uh, tell sign that you. Yeah, yeah. Like um, yeah. there's also plugins that make it. Make it Plugins that make it red, which is also very good. Let, let's add it down here. So the meetup service now exports the add attendees function that is used in in our endpoint in the index.js. We use it here. The first parameter is the meetup ID, and the second parameter is the person ID. Thank you. I just did not know that. Okay, cool. Hmm? Uh, this one? Uh, yeah, I changed this up here. Uh, no, this this is um, telling the node uh, the express server uh, on which um, endpoint it's gonna listen, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is calling the function from our meetup service. So in our meetup service here, we defined the um, we defined the add attendee function. Yeah. It doesn't have a dash. Yeah, it doesn't have a dash here. Um, we if we would change this here to something else, we would need to change it um, where it's used. But as we are only um, changing the endpoints name, so uh, if you type this into the browser, it, it's gonna um, browser it's gonna know where to go. Yeah. But this is the what outside world sees, mm -hmm. and this is your code. This is inside. Yeah. Okay. This is inside. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, let's use this now. So, meetup ID, person ID. Okay, I need two things. I need a meetup ID. So, this makes it a little bit complicated. So, let's. Let's. Um, person node zero. Let's save that. Do something here. Okay, so, just try to place to save this. So, this is the meetup ID. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna save this in this file so I can reference it later. I also need a person. Let's go to person all and just choose anyone. Merv again. Get his his ID. So I also have the person ID. And now I'm gonna use um, Axios to do a post to the endpoint we just defined and uh, pass it these two IDs. So it's Axios. So, meet up. Okay. Dash new meet up. Do you think it's not here? Uh, okay, person all has a two. Okay. Yeah. It's a little random. Okay. Uh, post. And then add dash. Let's just copy this. <laughs> Add attendee, okay. And then we are using uh, the body to pass uh, both information. You, you, you can see the request of body. So we need one meetup ID, which I will put here, meetup ID. Let's hope it's the right one. Yeah, thank you. And a person ID. Let's add this one. Shoop. Okay, this. Mm. 
okay, it's not red, which is great. So now our meetup should have that person. It does, but so as we um, as we uh, redefined here in meetup, this as an as type object ID. Yeah. So um, the attendees is a list of object ID. So we are not actually having uh, our people, uh, our, uh, our, the content of our person here. We're just referencing its ID. So this is a list of IDs, but that's not very useful for us. Like when we want to um, uh, access uh, information of a meetup, we want all the attendees. So to make that happen, there's a cool function called populate. Let's do that. Attendees. Person. So this person is in this meetup. Let's see. We could then go to the person endpoint and yeah. get the information. Yeah. Yeah. Just do one more thing here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's one way to do it, but that would mean we would do be uh, we would be doing two requests to our server. And why let's why do two when you can do one? It's always better Imagine to there are 100 persons, right? Yeah. 100. You can just send 100 And there is so. Uh, okay, so uh, the easy way is uh, you can tell Mongo uh, mongoose um, that field, that attendees field. I want that to be populated with its actual information. So you just go populate. So um, when you do a, um, let's let's dial back a little bit. So uh, the meetup dot all uh, dash all calls the find all function. Yeah. So this is called to get all the people, uh, all the meetups. So let's add it here. So we can use the populate. Yeah, it's something like yeah. It, it. I'm not going to go into detail, but you just go populate, and then you give it a path to tell it what it's supposed to populate. And we want the employee, no, not employees, the attendees to be populated. So now, if we do this again. We see that this now has the information, um, uh, the information of all attendees. Okay, we already told it that it gets the ID to the common database, and then you can request. So this is still the same request, but mm -hmm. the actual server is doing it. It gets the ID, gets the person from its own database, so you use the person, and this ID populates that. It's a second request. Yeah, I like it too. And that's. And it's Hydration is probably also there. Uh, one thing to mention is um, uh, we only added this to the find all function. So if we're still going to just find a single meetup with the find one, yeah, let's do that. It's meetup, meetup dash ID. It's not going to populate. So you need to do this for every single find operation you do. And if you want to populate something, you do it. Yeah, and There it is. Now the attendees are also populated with the find. So every time you do a find with uh, where there's references, you need to populate. You can also, um, if for example, uh, the meetup would have other things, for example, rooms or something like that, you can chain these, which is nice. So you can copy. This is just hypothetical code now. Don't write that. <laughs> so. Uh, so, so you can chain these. So if you would have attendees and rooms, you would also do dot .populate rooms and so on and so on. So it's selective here. You don't have to populate everything. Yeah. You can just select what you really want. Yeah, exactly. If you would only want the, um, the, the rooms, you can just populate rooms or uh, the attendees or both. Just like how you um, see fit in that situation. Uh, no. Part of the yes. This all um, these these chaining commands like there's lots of them, lots and lots and lots and lots of lots of them. Um, these always uh, reference the core thing. So this just adds, um, and not adds. Um, this modifies this one, and all, everything you do still references the original thing. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'm through.
Uh, yeah, yeah, like um, we didn't write the code here, but and there's ways to. And then we made sure that whenever we have a first attempt in Utah, the person that's attending in Utah will actually the first attempt. That thing is the original. It's not the different object that just looks like a person. The original actual person, that's the real good person, because it's a very different trajectory. So if you change the person, the original person, let's say from the folder, So now we know how to uh, interact with the database. Like, um, uh, one of the obvious benefits is it's far easier to write code for this. Like you don't have to uh, manually pick things and um, iterate through it and stuff like that. You can just um, trust the database uh, or in this uh, case Mongoose to do the heavy lifting for you, which is very, very convenient. Okay, let's not go there. <laughs> There's lots, lots of text there. Do you guys have access to that? Do you guys have access to the AI in AWS image server and already you just pushed the final version? No, I have not pushed the final version, but I will do, um, I, I have it finished here, I will just push it. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to know. Yeah, yeah it, it, this will be up. Yeah, I'm done. Oh yeah, I thought we were gonna use it, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah, it was it. it um, I can quickly show it. It is um, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So. You mean the access part in the browser? No, we don't. Yeah, I will show it again. So let's let's add a meetup again. So we have to add. Okay, these are. Uh, this is currently what we have. So let's add a meetup again. So I'm going to use Axios again. It is um, the post endpoint. It's a post endpoint, and it's just meetup. So you can always go into your. What I, what I do when I use someone else's API. Um, and I have a code access, I go to this file, to the index, and just check out what the stuff does. So we have this post endpoint, which always means creating or changing stuff. So this post endpoint just points at dash meetup, and it just takes the complete body. So I have everything I need to know about um, this endpoint um, in the code. So w this is how I like to uh, use it. So, okay, back to this. We have the post endpoint meetup, and it takes um, uh, we pass it a body, and in this body we have the name of the meetup, and the location. So this will create this meetup. Let's see. That's not good. Let's copy this. It's only in the root folder. Yeah. 
Yeah, it only works in the root voice. Sorry for not mentioning that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, sorry for not mentioning that. It only works in the root folder and for some reason in people. Um, <laughs> in pe no, no, only in people all. Like here it's, here it's there too. Okay, so we added the meetup. Let's see. Meetup dash I. Okay, there it is. So we have the new um, the new meetup here, but it does not have attendees. So there's no attendees in here. So we want to add an attendee here. We need two informations for that. We need the ID of the meetup. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in the code, we made this meet uh, meetup at attendee endpoint, and um, I decided that um, from the body, I take the meetup ID and the person ID and pass it into the add attendees function. So for this to work, I need to actually pass it the meetup ID and the person ID. So let's make, let's make the, um, the uh, and let's make the request first and then add the IDs later. So uh, it's post dash meetup dash add. And again, it has a text body. I know I need a meetup ID. Meetup ID. Okay. And I need a person ID. So the meetup ID I find under meetup all, which is this one. So let me just paste it in here. And I also need a, peop uh, a person's ID. So I need to tell which person. So let's do two people. Two person, person dash all. So this is um, here. I can see all the all the people in there. Let's copy an ID, paste it in here, press enter. Okay. Now the meetup should have meet. There. Okay, <laughs> you need you need to go to the root um, to the just to localhost three thousand, and only there there's access. I'm I'm very sorry for that. I will fix this before I push the code. Why is this happening? Okay, I, I can sh uh, tell you. So, um, last week Ermia uh, defined um, pack templates here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there was uh, there was this person, so no, there was this person um, like this is basically HTML, but uh, uh, let's not go <coughs> uh, into that. So we defined this, and this extends the layout which is here, and that includes Axios here. The, it's this line. Uh, the, this makes uh, downloads the script Axios and puts it into the page. Which in npm install version of the browser. Yeah. So you just tell the browser that you as a real library can do that. But so but we in our endpoints we we do use this res render on the root endpoint and we use res render on the people endpoint but everywhere else we just send back the um, we use send. So here we actually use these index uh, this um, templates so our HTML but here we're just sending um, information. So this JSON, yeah. data, there's no there's no the um, HTML around it. So all these functions instead of uh, actually rendering something, uh, they just send the um, the the actual JSON and uh, thus the access snippet. Now we just send the 
be okay. severed, the this and this and the other ones don't. Submitting the format without the actual video running format because yeah. maybe you didn't comment on the comment. Sure. GitHub service. Okay, let's mm -hmm. go to the GitHub service. Okay, let's let's go over yeah. the GitHub. So it's probably you use the person model. Did you require the person model? Okay. Okay, I will leave this. We will push this code on this here. Yeah. If there are missing ID, you can just replace it. Do you work with a runtime? Uh, is it? Yeah, please. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I saw them and I got them. Okay, what was, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, for everyone. <laughs> Confusion. Confusion. <laughs> Yeah, any other questions? There, there is. They, um, if, um, if, if, so if, for example, this find, oh no, find one is a bad example. But for example, create lots can go wrong in create. They throw an error. I just ignore them here. Um, but you can actually catch the errors. And, you and these are all promises, right? Yeah. You can just not catch all mm -hmm. of the errors and then do things accordingly. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't catch them at all, it will just bottle up to up to express, and it's up to express. I guess by default. It just prints. It just screen. gives a warning somewhere, but uh, you get warnings even if you don't um, uh, like uh, prepare for it. So it says so what. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Because Ideally, you yeah. should just catch the error and yeah. then say that it's something like we will we'll deal with it in the front end lecture. I guess mm -hmm. it's like two weeks. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, yeah, just two more weeks. In the in the front end lecture, Anya will tell you how to construct a front end application. Case we are just using axios to send things and just copying pasting IDs. That's obviously a video. Your front end application, which is an application that runs on the browser side, not on the back end side, just like we did before. But it's an application that runs on the client side, on browser, and it will just do things for you. It, it's an application by itself. It's called a front end application, and that application will handle those errors for you. You will tell the application to handle the errors. There is a red error message for you, etc. That's the front end concept. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it, yeah, it, the MongoDB saves your data, but it actually saves it on your machine. We, you can look at it. <laughs> um, it if you remember where we were setting your MongoDB up, you had to command npd-p data slash db. That is where the files are stored. They're actually physical files, but they're just not like yeah, regular files. You can just write things and open yeah. them up and so they're just weird, probably binary or some format mm -hmm. that MongoDB can handle. It's a special format. Yeah. Still a file, of course. Still is somewhere, safe somewhere, but you just can't understand it. Yes. And it could be anywhere in the world, by the way. We just set up the MongoDB on our own machines. In this case, we use local host for that. But you can set your MongoDB up with another server and just the connection thing is there that you just connect to the remote server and send data. It will save the data on its own server, not on your computer. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's basically just some random files in a folder, but all your data is going to be in there. But now it's time, I guess, if there is another
Ah, yeah, Robo. Robo, Robo 3T. So I'm gonna get just sometimes you, when you develop on this, you don't want to deal with Axios or something like that to just see your data. I just wanna see my data, maybe change something here and there. I don't want to um, like have endpoints and stuff. And that's what you use Robo for. It's just a um, it's just a client. And the first time you start it, you will probably uh, don't see anything here. Just go and create, um, leave everything as is, and click save. And, and then. Don't yeah. yeah, just okay, okay, make, make, make happen. And then you can see your database. I have lots of, we need to clean this up. Don't care about yeah. The test database. yeah, you will only you have the test, you will only have the test database and there you can see your collections. Like uh, you have the meetup collection and the people collection and if you just go double click on them, you can see the actual entries here. Uh, yeah, this so makes it, yeah, this makes it really easy to like, why is this not working and just see your data. Or for example, you made a typo, you can just um, uh, edit, right click, edit document, uh, change change something here in here. This is just JSON. This uh, very much visualizes that uh, MongoDB is just JSON. So you can change it here, press save and uh, your data is saved. Or if you accidentally add something, you can right click it and uh, delete the document and it's gone. This is very, very helpful when developing with MongoDB. Um, yeah. And that you don't have to type the endpoints yeah. in and just see yeah. them, all of them in the same place. You can make it yeah. So is there nothing to add to the database? You could. There's, 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 <laughs> there's, a, there's the Mongo shell. When you type Mongo, right, if we only use it to try it out, you can actually interact with the database directly. You can, um, but then but you need to know the yeah. Um, to, to make it work everywhere, you would have to use rest.render, but the problem is we render the, the person template here. So we actually pointed at person, where is it? Here. And um, this, is very um, th this is very specific to person. So it has people.length, person, uh, and people, and, and so on. So you would need to make uh, one of these um, templates for every single endpoint. Yeah, to display it somehow. For example, if you only have one entry, this doesn't need to for, uh, in each. Yeah, so this doesn't need to iter iterate over it. Or if you could um, say, I only want to display the name of a um, of a meetup, st some, something like that. Yeah, and then finally, the hmm? uh, yes. Yeah, this is the whole idea. Yes. That's what we're saying. Just we should remove send and use yep. less render instead of send. And we should have like, we should use the same yes. we just replace it with render, it will yep. just work. Yeah. Just yep. send just sends the data, render just renders the data, but mm -hmm. we don't use render instead of send. Yeah. Yeah. I will make this a little bit clearer in the code I upload. The final version of the yeah. code which Emmanuel will push yeah. everything will have its own views and uh, axios yeah. will work anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that's not a problem. Okay. No problem. Do you have any other questions?
Yes. Yeah.